What's up guys, Paul Attack Giant here, and today I'm gonna to share with you some really useful tips and tricks for your 2022 LG OLED TV. Now in this video, I'm gonna be using this 55 inch LG CS OLED for the demonstrations, but these tips and tricks can also be used with the 2022 LG A2, B2, C2, and G2 OLEDs. Now don't worry if you don't have a 2022 model because many of these tips and tricks will work on older OLED TVs, but some of the menus may differ. Now I've got some really great news for you guys if you are watching this video when it goes live because as usual, this TV has been sent over by the guys at box.co.uk. But once again, they have given me an exclusive code just for you guys. Now, I'm sure many of you have heard of the LG C1 OLED, the award-winning TV. Now, Box has managed to get more stock of this TV back in. And if you use my code of TG150, you will get £150 off the price, which is currently £999, taking it down to just 849. It will run from when this video goes live on the Friday to Sunday the 11th of December. Now I'm going to put a special affiliate link in the description below and in a pinned comment. Appreciate it if you use that. Puts a few pennies back in my pocket just as a way to say thanks for me giving you that exclusive code. Right then, let's crack on with some of these tips and tricks then. And what I'm going to do is start off with the more basic ones and then work our way up to the more advanced stuff. Right, first up, let's talk about the Magic Remote and its pointer. So we can get the pointer up in a couple of different ways. So first up, we can push down on the scroll wheel in the center of the remote control, move it backwards and forwards, and that should then get up that pointer. But as you can see on certain apps, that will also activate getting up maybe menus. Now, if that is the case, there is another way to get up that pointer. So if you just get the remote, give it a bit of a shake, and there you go, we get that magic pointer up on the screen. Next up, we're gonna look at the quick settings. So grabbing our remote control, pressing on the settings button just once, and we're gonna get our quick settings here just at the side, but we can edit these. We can move these around and add extra ones. So if you press on the edit button there, as you can see, we now have the option to move these about or delete them if we wish, but there is another way. If we uh, get that magic pointer, up on the screen there. We highlight one of uh, those icons there, hold down on the enter button, and then that puts us in the mode to move or delete those features. Now at the moment we have the maximum allowed of these features on the quick settings, but if we go down to the edit mode and we just delete say one off there, what we can do then is we get this plus symbol, and if we click on that, we then have a list of other ones or shortcuts that we can add if we wish. So I'm gonna to go to say pointer size and click on that. And I could then move that to wherever I want, drop it in there by just pressing enter or the back button. There we go, nice and simple. Right, next up, what we're gonna do is get up our main settings. So grabbing our remote control again, instead of pressing the settings button just once, this time we're actually gonna press and hold it down for a long press. And there we go, we get up our main settings. Now for our next tip, what we're gonna do is tune the sound of the TV to our viewing environment. And strangely enough, we don't find it under sound, but what we gotta do is go to general, and then AI service. Once we're in AI service, we're gonna go down to AI acoustic tuning. And then start new sound tuning. Now what's gonna happen in here, once we click on start, a sound is gonna be put out from the TV which will be picked up by the microphone in the remote control and it's then gonna tune the sound to the viewing environment. So let's press on that start button. And there we go, that is all done. So we're gonna click on next. And then we've got the option there to uh, listen to the acoustic to tune in off or AI acoustic tune in on. And then you can also change from standard to bass boost and treble boost. Personally, I like the AI acoustic tune in on and bass boost on in my personal viewing environment. And we simply press on apply and then okay. 
Now, something that can happen with these TVs, which are basically mini computers these days, is that they can start to slow up after you've been using them for quite a while, you know, opening and shutting various apps and menus and so on. But we can restore the speed of the TV again by going into our main settings and then down to general. And then from general, we're gonna to go to OLED care. In OLED care, we're then gonna go down to device self care. And in here, we're gonna to go to memory optimizer. And it says, this function optimizes TV status by deleting unused apps or unnecessary memories. So we're gonna click on that and then press on start. And there we go, that's gonna uh, delete off all that stuff. And uh, that's it, all done. Now, if we just back out of Memory Optimizer and we go down to Energy Saving, we have a great feature in here, which is Screen Off. So maybe you're listening to some uh, music on the TV, you know, like a music video, but you don't want to see the actual video because you may be worried about burning with static logos and such like. Well, you can go to Screen Off and you can still hear the sound, but you don't get the image. And if we then just press on the back button, there we go. Now, if you do like the look of that feature, but you think it's a little bit long-winded to get to, then don't despair. So, if we go back to our main screen there and just press on the settings button just once, and we get up our quick settings, we go down to edit, and then the plus symbol, as long as we've deleted off one of the pre-installed shortcuts there. And if we go down, we can see screen off just there, and we could add that. So we'd add that just there. There we go. We can just press that settings button just once and then go straight to screen off. Now with new TVs come new updates, but how do we get the updates? Well, if we grab our remote control, hold down on the settings button, go down to support, and then software update. And in here we can check for updates by clicking on check for updates and then it will come up and let you know if there is one available. And in here, what I would recommend doing is if yours is ticked to on for automatic update, I would tick it to off just in case there is a bit of a dodgy update and you don't want the TV automatically downloaded it. Now let's talk about the magic pointer once again. And did you know that you can actually change the size of it? Now to do this, what we need to do is go into our main settings. So long press then on the settings button. Then we've got to go to general, then down to system, then additional settings, and then pointer options. So in here, we can change the tracking speed. We've got slow, normal, and fast. And then we've got the pointer sizes. So we've got small, as you can see there, little diddy thing. Then we have medium, and that's what it is as default. And then we have your jumbo large. And I'll tell you what, I think we're gonna leave it on the large one. Now you eagle-eyed viewers out there may have noticed that the pointer sometimes changes color. So if we go to support, it doesn't do anything. But if we go to pointer size, it goes to purple. And what this is indicating that there is additional information available. And to get that additional information up, what we do is highlight something which is purple, press and hold on the enter button on the remote control for a long press, and then we can find out more information by going to the question mark or searching on the web. Now, did you know that you can check the battery level of the remote control of your LG OLED TV? Well, in a sort of way anyway. So what we're gonna do is press and hold the settings button for a long press. We're gonna go down to support and then quick help. In quick help, we're gonna go to check items. We're gonna go to check status of TV. And then we're gonna to go to check magic remote. Then what we need to do is press on start diagnosis. And then it will say about the remaining battery. But instead of it giving us a percentage, it just says diagnosis results enough. So a little bit vague, but at least it does give you some sort of indication. Now, if we back out of this, we can run additional checks on the TV so we can check the OLED panel. So if we go to that and start diagnosis, there we go, it says okay. It's popped up straight away because I've already done that once, but we can also do that for the Bluetooth stroke Wi-Fi and the check illumination sensor, which again, I've just done a minute ago, but if you press on start diagnosis, there we go. Once again, it's saying it's all good. 
Next, let's look at some great tips with the remote control. So on here, if we hold down on the mute button for a long press, that quickly takes us to our accessibility settings, which is a much faster way of doing it than going through all the menus. Now this next feature I know many people are gonna absolutely love, and that is called Enjoy TV Sound Together. So what this does is, this function allows sound out to be produced with TV speaker and Bluetooth device simultaneously. So people with different levels of hearing impairment can watch TV together. For Bluetooth devices, earphone and headphone types are recommended. So that means you can have sound coming out of the TV and a set of headphones, which I think is really handy. Now this next one is particularly useful for me, and uh, not everyone would want to use this because, you know, it could be an issue if it comes to burning and all that, and that is to do with the transparency there of the menus. So if we go down to high contrast, as you can see, it just makes it more solid. And I'm going to leave it on that because it just makes it easier for you guys to see what's going on. Moving on to the next tip with the remote control, and that is to do with the inputs button. So if we press that just once, we get up our inputs just there, and we can use the pointer, we can use the directional buttons, or if we just press on the uh, input button just there, it will scroll through those various options. And one of those options in there is the home dashboard, but there is a quicker way to actually get to it. So what we're gonna do is do a long press on the inputs button, and that will take us straight into that home dashboard. Now these next tips are particularly useful from the home dashboard. If we go to these three dots up in the top right hand corner, press enter, and then we go down to edit inputs. And then once in edit inputs, we can select any of these here, these HDMI. So I'm gonna say HDMI 2, click on that. And now I can rename that to whatever I want. So I could delete all that off and just write in uh, TG and press enter. There we go. But not only that, we can also change the icon. So if we click on the icon just there, we can change that from an HDMI icon to anything we wanted, such as a set-top box or a DVD player, or maybe even a games console. Now this next tip is something I can pretty much guarantee everyone will want to use. Now on our remote control, we do have some uh, shortcuts already on there but there may not be shortcuts that you want. So it could be a shortcut to an app or maybe an input, such as one of the HDMIs. Now currently I'm on YouTube and as you can imagine, I watch a lot of YouTube, but there is no shortcut on there. But what we can do, if we go to the numerical buttons just there, and uh, I pick one of those and hold it down for a long press. So I'm gonna say number eight, hold that down. It says, do you want to add YouTube to quick access eight? And I'm gonna say yes. And there we go, it has been added. So I'm now on Netflix and I wanna to go to YouTube. So all I do now is hold down on number eight and it takes me straight back into YouTube. Now, how do you check which shortcuts you have added to which button? Well, if we grab our remote, hold down the zero button for a long press that will get up all the ones that have been added. Now say if we wanted to remove one such as BBC iPlayer, well, all we do is hover over it, go to the trash can and click on it. Do you want to uh, remove it? Yes. And there we go, it now frees up so we can now assign one to that again. And if you did want to do it without holding down a long press on one of the buttons, you could come into here, just click on add, and then it will bring up a list of all the things that you can actually add to that shortcut button. Now we access our next tip when we are using one of the HDMI inputs. What we wanna do is get up our magic pointer and then press the enter button on the remote control. And that brings us up information about what is going on with that HDMI. So it says HDMI one, Sky Q. And uh, if we click on, let me just get that back up again for a second. If we actually click on that box, it then spans up and it gives us even more information. So aspect ratio, resolution, and so on. Now, if we back out of that and then go to the side and click on these three dots, it brings up another menu. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom and go to change banner location. 
So what this does now is it allows us to change where the banner actually pops up to. So at the moment it's just there, indicated by that green tick, but I'm gonna actually have it over here. So I'm just gonna highlight that box there, press the enter button, and there we go, it's moved up to the top right hand corner which is quite handy because it's less intrusive. Now I've got another sneaky little tip for you. If you want to find out about information when you've got something connected up via HDMI, what we're going to do is grab our remote control, press on the green button rapidly a number of times. And there we go we get up this VRR information. Moving on to the next tip then, and what we're gonna do is go to our home menu. So we're gonna press on the home button just once, and then we're gonna have a look at our apps bar. Now on here, we've got all our pre-installed apps, but you may not like the order that they are in. Well, what you can do, you can scroll all the way to the end and go to edit apps list, and then you just select which one you want. You can either delete it off or click on it, and then move it across and drop it to wherever suits you. But once again, there is a quicker way of doing this. So if we get up our magic pointer, highlight one of those apps, hold down the enter button, and there we go. Now we can move that straight away and then drop it into place. Simple as that. Now going back to using the home button again, and instead of pressing the home button just once, what we're gonna do this time is hold it down for a long press. And as you can see, we are doing that we will jump back to the previous app that we were using or input. So I'm gonna hold that button again. There we go, back to the sky box, hold it once again, back to YouTube, very handy. Now this final tip is very handy if you have lost your remote control or for some reason you just don't wanna use it because this TV does have a hidden button. Yes, so if we go to the bottom of the TV, and look up just there, we do have a button. And if we uh, go to the wide angle there, and I press on that button just once, you can see it brings up a menu. And every time you press that button one more time, it scrolls through it. And if we do a long press, so highlight something like power off, hold that button down, and then that enters. Well, there you go then guys, that was my first lot of tips and tricks, but there are more to come in a future video. Now, if you do appreciate the information that I've given you in this video, you can support the channel in a number of different ways. So first off, we have our YouTube super thanks feature where you can donate to the channel. You can purchase anything from Box via my affiliate link, and I also have Amazon affiliate links, and these all can be found down below. Now, do us a favor, I take a lot of time doing these videos, but it only takes you one second to reach up and hit that thumbs up button, and it really does help out promote these videos. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, then hit that subscribe button, and make sure you hit the bell icon as well, so you get notified of my latest uploads. So anyway, thank you very much for joining me today, and hopefully, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now.